Assalamu alaikum and good evening to you all. Welcome to the third episode of our weekly program Health Talk. Health Talk is a health educational Talk program health educational organized program by SP Bangladesh by SP and Bangladesh. supported by Bangladesh Society of Medicine. In this program, we try to bring one of the best professors of our country who shares their vast medical education and knowledge with us. In this episode, our speaker is Professor Ahamudul Kobit Sir, Professor of Medicine, Dhaka Medical College and Secretary General of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Today, Sir will speak on Upper GI Endoscopy. The chairperson of today's program is Professor Khaja Najimuddin Sir, Professor of Medicine, Bardem and Vice President of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. As a chief guest, we have Professor Muhammad Enamul Karim Sir with us. He is the principal and professor of Universal Medical College and member executive committee of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. We also have our very own Professor Nazmul Hassan Sir as a special guest. As we all know, he is the current governor of SAP Bangladesh chapter and former president of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Our today's program will be moderated by Dr. Said Golam Mogni Maula Sir. He is Associate Professor of Medicine, Dhaka Medical College and Secretary for International Affairs of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. During this live session, you can ask topic related questions to the speaker in the comment section. We will try to answer your question in the question and answer session, which will start immediately after the presentation. Now, I would like to ask Dr. Said Golam Mogni Maula Sir to proceed with today's program. Dr. Said Golam Mogni Maula Sir. Thank you, Dr. Prince Kausar. Good evening and assalamu alaikum to all the learned audience. This is really a privilege and honor to me to moderate this starlit session of tonight, which is the Health Talk Episode 3 of American College of Physician Bangladesh Chapter. And we, as Dr. Kausar has already mentioned, that we have a renowned highly esteemed speaker today, who is the professor of medicine, who is secretary general of Bangladesh, Bangladesh Society of Medicine, Professor Ahmadul Kobir, and also what I, I mentioned most about him, that he has portrayed the true picture of a modern internist of 2020. That is not a medicine specialist who only writes medicine, but who takes up, who focuses, on learning special skills and he as well as an internal medicine specialist he has the focus and ability to have special skills like endoscopy it may be ecocardiology and others and dr Ahmadul kobi as long as with as an internal medicine he is also an renowned endoscopist as well and today's topic reflects that perfectly that endoscopy in internal medicine, which is also an important topic for all the learners to dine, that it is an important auspice session as well in, in different postgraduate examinations. So we must know the endoscopic pictures of different medical situations. And of course, I must thank SCP chapter Bangladesh, all the members of the governing council, especially we must mention the dynamic leadership of current governor of SCP chapter Bangladesh, Professor Najmul Hassan sir, our most respected teacher, who has taken up this responsibility that even in, in this COVID situation where the learning, learning process, the process of knowledge must not stop. And SCP chapter Bangladesh has so nicely arranged, I must thank from the core of my heart that this step of health talk and truth and highlighting important topics of the current scenario to all the students. Thank you, sir. And thank you all SCP chapter Bangladesh. And we are very delighted as Dr. Kausar said to have the STU chief guest, Professor Mohammed Enamul Karim sir and our chairperson, Professor Khaja Najibuddin sir, who are all renowned and needs no further elaboration of their charismatic career in medicine. So straight away, learned audience, I won't take much time more, and I'll request today's astute professor, 
Professor Ahmed Al Kobi, sir, to bring in his dynamic and brilliant presentation of the night. Thank you, sir. Please carry on. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you very much, my one of the favorite teacher, as well as one of the smart presenter of today's and moderator, Dr. Syed Bala Mogli Mola. Thank you so much for your very brilliant introduction. Uh, we are very happy to see today our uh, chairperson of today's session, Professor Khaja Najimuddin, Chief Guest, Professor Alamul Karim. And uh, we see that uh, our special guest, Professor H.M. Nazbul Asansar, who is the governor of SCP Bangladesh chapter. So, indeed, it is a great privilege for me to be able to participate in today's session. I would like to give my special thanks to the organizer, especially the SCP Bangladesh chapter and the governor of ACP chapter, Professor H.M. Nazbul Hassan. So, without wasting much of the time, uh, I'm going to the presentation straight away. I believe uh, the presentation, uh, up at the end of the presentation, there will be some questions so that we can answer them as well. So thank you very much. I'm going to begin today's session. So let us uh, look at the history of the endoscopy. Just a few seconds to introduce the history of endoscopy. You see the first endoscopy done by Philip Bosini in 1806. So, Felix Bosini, how he tried to do this endoscopic examination. And later on, in 1961, endoscopic examination of the stomach and duodenum with a cap with the fiber scope. And it was published in Lancet. The way they did it, it was really very beginning of the endoscopy era. Now, let us see the modern endoscope, which is a fiber optic endoscope and it has got many parts and how to hold the endoscope if you can see the when you hold the endoscope uh, you can look at the uh, way he hold the endoscope your finger where to put it and these are the several knobs and others i'm not going to the details just a bird's eye view how to hold the scope you need to hold the scope in one hand and in, introduce by other hand do not put a assistant while you do this because uh, you need to be very careful introducing the endoscope. Next. Now, let us have a normal uh, look uh, to the normal anatomy, how when we go through the endoscope. At the beginning, you see the endoscopy pipe is there. It's a very flexible endoscopy pipe. And you see the stomach and the deuterium is visualized and the light source is in front of the endoscope. Now, it's very interesting to look. There is a junction. It is a cricopharyngeal junction. And on the right side, the vocal cord is very easily visible. So if somebody enters through the vocal cord, he will enter the trachea and it is dangerous. So nobody, uh, when you introduce the endoscope, must be very careful about the path. And you should not go through the vocal cord. You must go in the direction of the cricopharyngeal junction behind the trachea to enter inside the esophagus. So look at the direction. So that's not the right side is not the way because if you want to throw that, you'll go to the trachea. Now introducing the endoscope, what we see the upper esophageal sphincter, the cricopharyngeal muscle is contracting the upper esophagus. This is a proximal esophagus is in the distance. Next, if you introduce a little bit further, you can see the mid esophagus. And the esophagus has a whitish appearance with a delicate vascular pattern. Now, proceeding further, this is a very important landmark for the beginner. The sharp demarcation of the mucosal pattern, if you see on the left and right pattern, this is a gastroesophageal junction. This is very important to know because many of the pathology and landmark is situated in this junction. There is a sharp demarcation in this junction. There is a squamous mucosa and blood vessel and abruptly with a well demarcated margin. So the difference in the mucosal pattern, the pinkish mucosa is the stomach and little bit of uh, grayish mucosa that is in the above that is the esophagus and the sharp demarcation is the gastroesophageal junction this landmark is important why because all sort of pathology beginning from the varies varicial lesion gastroesophageal reflux disease hiatus hernia this needs to be carefully addressed from this location if anybody can locate the gastroesophageal junction the sharp demarcation between the mucosa that is the very important landmark for the student who is going to begin 
Now, going to the little bit inside the stomach, if you carefully look at the first slide, on the left and the right side on the first slide, first view, so when you enter the endoscope, you see there is a rugosity. On the left side, the rugosity is drains, and this is the greater curvature. And on the right side, the rugosity is less, that is the lesser curvature. So, and the endoscopic tube enters the stomach, the greater curvature is on the left, and the lesser curvature is on the right, with the angular is in the distance. The rugi are more prominent on the greater than on the lesser curvature. Then, when you proceed further, uh, in the distal body, rugi are very less. And you see the number two point of the uh, showing the angularis. Next, when we proceed further, enteral mucosa is visible. And you see it is very smooth and there is no rugosity. And the, in the distance, you see the opening that is the pylorus. So if we carefully look to the one, two, three, four. Number one, on the left side, there is a greater curvature. On the right side, the lesser curvature. Greater curvature having more rugosity. On the second slide, we can see the angularis. Then after crossing the angularis, we can go to the pylorus, very smooth pylorus, and the distal, you see the pinpoint opening of the pyloric orifice. And on the right side, you see on the left side, you can see the endoscopy tube, right? On the left side tube, on the right side, you cannot see the tube. So on the left side is the greater curvature, and that landmark is the angularis. And on the right of the angularis, you see the pyloric opening and this is very smooth and proceeding further you can enter the pylorus okay crossing the pylorus we are just beginning to the journey of seeing the start of the small intestine so entering here you see the normal duodenal bulb very important finding is the vascular pattern it is more pronounced in the vascular pattern in the duodenum and you can see if you look little bit far there are circular folds of the second duodenum which is very clearly visible so if you see the transition from the normal vascular mucosal fold and you can see the circular fold, this is the second part of the duodenum. And proceeding further on the second part of the duodenum, in the second slide, you see the second duodenum is characterized by the circular folds, termed the valvula corriventis. The mucosa has a granular appearance, the difference between the duodenal bulb and the second part of the duodenum. So the, now, after, if you introduce the endoscope a little bit further, you can see nipple-like structure. The major papilla, you see the nipple-like projection on the left side of the slide. The major papilla is seen on the medial of the wall of the mid-second duodenum. And there were some minor papilla, which is also shown proximally and in superior position on the isolated slide on the right side. So you can see the major duodenal papilla here. And you see the minor duodenal papilla is here. So this is the second duodenum, and these are the valvula conventis. Now, okay, now we are going to the jejunum. You see the sharp demarcation. You see the demarcation. Jejunum is characterized by thinner, but you see more, more frequent, you see more frequent circular flows then in the duodenum. So you see many, many circular folds are there. So this is not the duodenum, so it's a jejunum, okay? Sorry, coming back to the slide, okay. Now, so you can easily identify the jejunum. Then after crossing the jejunum, you can see the mucosa finely glarular and the appearance is smooth. And there are some lymphoid structure is present here. And this is the beginning of the ileum. So this is the terminus. So clear demarcation between the jejunum and the ileum. So mucosa has got no circular fold in the terminal ileum. But in the jejunum, there are many circular fold. And it is very smooth. So this is the ileum and jejunum. Now, we have crossed the jejunum. And then we are going and you cannot proceed further from the jejunum, so you can come back from the back. We are going through the colonoscopic finding. So entering through the rectum, then we are going to the sigmoid colon. So this is the structure of the sigmoid colon. So here you can see the thickened circular fold. 
and these are the hypertrophied musculature and you see there are some opening there this is called diverticular there are some diverticular present i think you can clearly see the diverticular and on the if you proceed further you can see the transverse colon the typical appearing triangular folds of the transverse colon you see this is a very clear it's a triangular very easy to identify these are the triangular fold so this is the transverse colon so after transverse colon you if you proceed further you can see a very interesting structure when you proceed further you can see the ascending colon you see this one is the splenic flexor so how you identify you reach the splenic flexor it's very interesting finding the color you see total this is spleen how nice the impression of the spleen over the colon so when you reach here long bluish indentation from the spleen is very much clearly visible with normal overlying colonic mucosa so that is the splenic flexor next you proceeding further so you are going to the right side you come you can enter through the liver so you can again see the impression and uh, the uh, darkish hue you can see this is the hepatic flexor it's a darkish hue from the liver so overlying the normal colonic mucus seen overlying the bluish hue of the liver so you can see through the colonoscopy the liver and the spleen so overlying the spleen is a splenic flexor and overlying the liver is the hepatic flexor i think if you can identify the landmark where you are then you can know the lesion on that area you can easily pick up the pathology from there okay from the hepatic flexor if you proceed further you come to a area you see very interesting area this is the area uh, you can see like a bulb you see this is a bulb this is a very thick and yellow structure represent the ileocecal bulb so this is where we ended in the ileum now we are entering inside the cecum so from the ileum we are entering to the cecum sorry a little bit faster so this one the ileocecal bulb and this is the cecum so very carefully observe the because many lesion begins in the ileocecal area and if you cannot identify the ileocecal bulb you'll miss the pathology first you need to know the normal anatomy then can you can identify the pathology now coming back to the cecum you see the thickened tinea coli these are the tinea coli you see these are the tinea coli converse with several others they are conversing with one another like this you see these are cross foot or cecal strip okay so if you see come and cross this type of area like this tinea coli so this is the where you reach the landmark of cecum so if you understand the normal anatomy then you can go for the pathology uh, unless you know the normal anatomy you cannot understand the pathology and every disease has got a significance depending on the anatomical landmark uh, the disease process will begin from there so if you know the ileocecal bar now you know the cecum now you know the from beginning you know the esophagus stomach duodenum jejunum ileum beginning from down you know the sigmoid you know the hepatic flexor you know the splenic flexor coming back you know the ileocecal bar you know the cecum just remember all these things we we'll proceed to the next slide all right based on the normal anatomy what actually inside the human body how the esophagus stomach jejunum and colon looks so i i believe uh, you have a brief idea of the normal landmarks and normal anatomy now based on this knowledge you can proceed further to know the diagnostic procedure later on we'll come to the therapeutic process well again i'm coming back you see the endoscope there this is the pipe is going to there and this is the light source you can see everything like a torch light you can see everything visible in front such a wonderful discovery you can see everything inside without opening the body so this is a very very good discovery in the medical field 
So you see the stomach, this is the rugosity and coming to this are the greater curvature, this is the lesser curvature and you are coming to the antrum, this is the pyloric opening, you are coming to the duodenal bulb and you are torching out to see the second part of the dome. What a wonderful things here. Okay. Well, as I said earlier, though the landmark is very clear, you see this is the area, you see this is the beginning and the lower end of the esophagus. As you remember I said earlier, you need to know the gastroesophageal junction, the sharp demarcation of the mucosa from the pinkish mucosa to the little bit of paler mucosa. So this is the esophagus, undoubtedly this is little bit paler. Oh, sorry, I'm <laughs> going back, going back, back one, yeah. So, can any, I, I believe you can understand this is the tortuous blood vessel. Tortuosity of the blood vessel, this is uh, too many, one, two, three, four. This should not be present in the lower end of the esophagus, as we saw, uh, we have shown you in the normal anatomy. So, these are the parishes and the dilated tortuous pericial vein in the lower end of the esophagus. Now, again back, okay, I'm going to the next slide. This endoscopy finding the esophageal varices, you should remember this is a very important and common finding and these are the features of chronic liver disease with portal hypertension. Now, most important is that whenever you see the varics, you need to know how to grade these varics because the treatment depends on the grading of the varices and if the grade is high, chances of bleeding is very high. So very easy classification. You see the small size varics, then the medium size, then the large size. So small size or F1, medium size or F2, and large size or F3. So when this picture will be given in the exam, you will be asked to see the grade of the varics, grade 1 or a small or F1, grade 2 or medium or F2, grade 3 or large or F3. So whenever there is a minimally elevated area of the blood vessels, this is the minimally elevated area, just vein above the surface. So this is grade 1. Then this is you see the grade 2. So torsos vein occupying less than one third of the lumen. This is the lumen, right? So this is less than one third of the lumen. So this is the grade 2. But when it increases, this very safe increase, it can obliterate the total lumen. Or if it in, in it, it is enlarged the size more than one third of the esophageal lumen, this area, you see, it can completely obliterate also. So this is the grade 3. So depending on the size of the varices, it could be small size or F1, if it increases less than one third of the lumen, grade 2. If it is more than that, grade 3, very easy classification. Oh, this is very interesting, you see, uh, this looks like cherry, looks like cherry. What it means? This is very cherry red spot, this is actually not a cherry but it looks like cherry red spots. These spots are suggestive of recent or impending bleeding. And this is a very dangerous sign. If you see cherry red spot, the, the there is every chance that the patient will bleed and can go to the shock. And this is a very dangerous threat for the patient. So I believe you can understand this. It's a very important finding. Now, we, we are still in, uh, in the esophageal lesion. So you see, this is the lumen of the esophagus. First, you need to identify the lumen of the esophagus. But you see, there are many, many white spots there. You see the white spots. This is a patient, if he is having immunodeficiency or long standing diabetes, he used to take inhaler, there could be candidious lesion. So these are the esophageal monoliasis. Very important findings. Now, this is a spot diagnosis. This is actually a 
malignant lesion in the esophagus. Why it is malignant lesion? This is squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus because you see the surface is very irregular and mucosa is elevated. So there are no necrotic debris. So this is the character of a malignant lesion. In duration, surface elevation and deep ulcer and angry look. So all these characters goes in favor of malignant ulcer, not a benign ulcer. Oh, look at this and the endoscopy is being rotated. So this is actually the hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia is the lesion where the, you see the esophagus can be slide, stomach can be sliding and going to the stomach side. This is the normal lower esophageal junction. And you see the stomach mucosa totally elevated upward. This is the sliding or can be slide through the fundic part. It can go to the inside the diaphragm. So there are hiatus hernia. You see what this is actually, uh, this is going to be the, the oh, uh, next, next slide you can see what we are doing here. This is actually the lesion you can see easily. There are loss of the mucosal lesion coming back to the, this is a very important finding. Uh, the earlier one we have shown, now it is very clear from this slide. You can see the reflux. In the lower end of the esophagus, if you see this slide, a lot of erosions are there. It's blacking mark is there. So linear erosions are there. So these are the, when the acid used to reflux towards the esophagus, there is generally gastroesophageal reflux disease occurs. It's very important clinically because GERD patient can present like microaspiration and a lot of many systemic presentation occurs due to gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now I have a look to the Los Angeles grade classification of the erosive esophagitis. If the lesion is, you see this lesion, less than 5 millimeter in its vertical length and grade B is more than 5 millimeter and Grade C, it generally embed between the bus, uh, fold of the esophagus and grade 4, it is a breathing lesion. So this one is the grade A, just linear erosion. Grade B, when it crosses the two fold and grade C, it is involving more than the area shown. Let me explain you this. Break is less than 75% involvement. This area less than 75% of the area. And you see this one more than 75% throughout the whole of the esophageal lumen is involved. So these are the grade A, B and C of the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, this is again an interesting finding. This is a very healthy elevation, just tongue-like projection. As we said, this is the esophageal, going back again, this is the esophageal mucosa, little bit of paler, and the red one is the stomach mucosa. But the jet line has been embedded by the stomach mucosa like a tongue-like projection, you see. It entered inside the esophageal land. It is not the stomach land, it is the esophageal land. So the stomach mucosa embedded the esophagus, you see. See, this is basically, it should stop here. But it embedded the esophagus. It went to the esophagus, it went to the esophagus, like a triangular position. So this is a barrier esophagus. This is salmon colored mucosa in the distal esophagus, just proximal to the gastrophysial junction. And uh, one thing is very interesting, you must look there is no evidence of esophageal stricture, nodule, or ulceration. And the stomach and duodenum are unremarkable. That is a very important pointer 
that it is not gastroesophageal reflux disease this is barrett's esophagus in barrett's esophagus there is no ulceration but earlier you see the GRD, there were ulcerations. So sharp differentiation between these two. Well, you see, if you can remember the normal anatomy as I shown earlier. So you see this is angularis and this is the greater curvature area and this is the lesser curvature area. So and very, very interesting finding is that there is, you see, necrotic debris and granulation tissue. And you see the surface is convergence towards the ulcer and it is not ugly looking and there are no surface elevation very flat surface and the lesion in the lesser curvature so it should be a benign gastric ulcer it should not be malignant so no criteria malignancy is there number one location so 95 percent is the lesser curvature you see the margin is regular granulation tissue in the floor is not inverted or not even punched out and the surrounding area is normal and the size and extent is small deep up to the muscle layer so the picture shown fulfill all the criteria of a benign gastric ulcer now look the sharp differentiation between the earlier one and this one well this one on the right side so in the laser curve sorry <laughs> this one on the right side but this is on the left side if you remember the anatomy I have displayed earlier left side one this is the greater curvature okay so if any lesion in the greater curvature you should consider it as malignancy site is the greater curvature and you see the margin is highly irregular and you see there are no granulation tissue no healing process rather necrotic slough in the floor rather necrotic slough in the floor and you see the aces that means the margin look how everted it is and surrounding area shows very ugly nodules ulcer irregularities in duration and size and extent is very large and deep so it fulfill all the criteria because it is in the greater curvature and margin is everted so it is undoubtedly a malignant ulcer so you must understand first the anatomy if it was in the right side on the lesser curvature you could think of a benign depending on the anatomical location but a it in the greater curvature so location indicating malignancy in duration indicating malignancy inverted margin indicating malignancy looks angry indicated malignancy okay oh what is this? You can identify multiple ulceration. Going back again to the slide. You see, if you remember, as I say, the duodenum. Duodenum, you can remember the, through this valvular convention or other pictures. You see, remember the normal anatomy? As I said, normal anatomy is very important. You see, ulcer. How many ulcers are there? And in the third part of the duodenum, even everywhere there is ulcer next so the third leading cause of peptic ulcer this is whenever there is use ulcer an unusual side of ulcer this is Jollinger Ellison syndrome this normal normal acid output is a high acid output next oh yes what is this endoscopic finding oh sorry I have given the answer <laughs> this uh, finding you see like grip like you see this is the fundus of the stomach wait it changes i don't know a uh, lot of graves like fundus and if you do biopsy here the patient if you do, take biopsy from here there will be sprout of bleeding and the patient will expire so be careful identify the fundic varices next next yes this is again we're in the stomach if you can remember the stomach and its rugosity and what is this this is a mosaic you see the mosaic you can see the uh, today nowadays uh, we don't used to do the mosaic we used to go for tiles or marble or rather but still it needs do you see the mosaic pattern so this is a mosaic pattern of portal hypertensive gastropathy in the stomach next 
स्नेक स्किन गैस्ट्रोपैथी और पोटल हाइपरटेंसिव गैस्ट्रोपैथी जनरली ऑकर्स इन सिरोटिक पेशेंट और दी आर्लियर स्लाइड uh this is a very very interesting the finding possibly some very rare things we came across to this case in dhaka medical college extremely rare disease meniere's disease and we could make a diagnosis of this meniere's disease and the patient presented with protein losing gastroenterology there was a very interesting case in my life to see the meniere's disease we we have heard many times but seeing first time in my ward next next uh well this is again so very interesting slide if you can remember you see the area as we shown earlier this is the pylorus where the mucosa have got no rugosity but from the pylorus you see the parallel area of blood vessel you see and gorse blood vessel this is very very parallel going like this like a watermelon go back to the slide going back uh, you see this is just like a watermelon if you cut a watermelon that will have a red pale red pale so the reddish area is vascular actesia and in between there is a normal healthy mucosa so very interesting finding of gastric antral vascular actesia and this is called gape so in the pylorus radiating area of the vascular actesia this is called Gape. Next, watermelon stomach or gastric antral vascular actesia. Oh, this is very interesting slide. Majority of the cases, the patient present with severe upper GI bleeding, but unfortunately, remain undiagnosed because the finding is so subtle and nobody can identify unless he is very careful. And these are the blood vessel. which is having a clot sub mucosal 1 to 2 mL blood vessel and this is a aberrant blood vessel if it leaks it bleeds like a jet and can have a huge and massive bleeding you can remember you can understand what is this wait a second you will get the answer and this is actually the dula foesylation in the esophagus dula foesylation can occur through the esophagus stomach due to anywhere and dula foesylation is one of the important reason where the cause of massive bleeding cannot be identified unless you are very expert or skilled so dula foesylation is an abnormally large artery the vessel takes blood from the heart to the other areas of the body in the lining of the gastric system though it is most common in the stomach it can be anywhere and from this dula foesylation you see how the bleeding is going on sprout of bleeding that's very life threatening situation next knee slide you can see the gastric body is markedly abnormal with irregular is the mucosal fold and nodularities and you see the nodules have a white shape here this is a interesting finding you see the white areas so what is this white areas these are lymphoids areas so when there is a nodularity and white area the diagnosis is nothing but lymphoma gastric lymphoma you should note this note this white is milk like area on the background of nodularities so if you incidentally get such slide in the exam look at the white is spot next uh, this is a helicobacter pylori infection leading rise to ulcer gastric ulcer next let us go for a little bit of colonoscopic finding quickly then we come back again so this is a pictorial diagnosis you see as i have shown you earlier this slide has been taken from the colon so the colon is became massacar no vascularity the vascular pattern is totally altered and through and through my uh, total lesion there is no skip lesion and there is loss of vascular pattern mucosal granularity and very ugly look 
colon. So this is nothing but ulcerative colitis. And on the right side, you can see the barium enema contrast finding. Next. So the most important find is there was a no vascular pattern. There was hemorrhage, there was mucus, was friable, there was mucopus, there was spontaneous bleeding on touch. So remember this is ulcerative colitis. Next. All right. See, this is again a destructive colon. So these are like Burinda, small, small polyp. These are called pseudo polyp. These are not real polyp. Real polyp overlaying mucosa should be healthy. But you see the damaged colon and there are many, many pseudo polyps. So pseudo polyps are both common in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease everywhere. So these are the bleeding, many, many pseudo polyps there and the loss of vascular pattern and everything is there. Next. So you see the pseudo polyps and the mucosa healthy, unhealthy area. So multiple ulcer, edema, erythema, friability, focal area of scaring, multiple pseudo polyps and pseudo diapyl. This is basically a picture of Crohn's disease. Going back again. Back. You see the back again. Yeah. There is healthy mucosa. There is many, many pseudo polyps. And there is a skip lesion. Next slide. Next. So you see the endoscopy feature of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. You see the distribution, other area. Pseudo polyp is frequent, frequent in both area, vascular pattern blunted. And sometimes it's normal. You go through this theoretical aspect. I don't want to go. I want to see you the pictorial impressions only. Well, next slide. Again, go back. This is basically hemorrhoids. So the internal and external. Next. Okay, next slide. Oh, you can see in the colon, there are some opening, you see. There is this opening. These are, if it is given, you can assume this is the diverticula. Next. You see the diverticulum. So very easy pictures given there. Next. So you see, there are many potatoes inside the colon. So these are not real potato or these are not rasogulla. These are polyp. It's a huge polyp. This is called familial adenomatous polyposis. I think easily you can identify these polyps. I, I think if I go for the familial adenomatous polyposis, you please go through the text and a lot of things to be speaks. Let us stay with the picture only. Next. Necrosis of the colonic wall. So this is again a dangerous picture. And nowadays in the COVID situation, we used to face many of the mesenteric ischemia. So this is basically ischemic colitis. Next, ischemic ulcer. Okay. This is basically very difficult in colonoscopy and endoscopy to differentiate between the tuberculosis or Crohn's disease, but still these are the pictures showing the ulcer nodularity in the defined area and a, not a big area of lesion. This is going in more in favor of intestinal tuberculosis. Next. Oh, now I'm going for assessment of a real case. This was a really big challenge. This gentleman of 18 years old apparently looks like five years or six years. His growth was stunted. When he came to us, had a multiple visit with many areas, both home and abroad. And patient had only problem of the severe abdominal pain. And I did the endoscopy and you see the picture, multiple patchy skip big ulcer. Seen bone, body, entrum, pre-pyloric area. 
ulcer based reveal edema infiltration lot of ulcerations see the throughout the stomach is ulceration of a very for the 8 to 10 years he has been suffering from with this stomach ulceration there was unresolved abdominal pain gastric ulcer despite conventional treatment patient had chronic diarrhea and had malabsorption feature as i said stunted growth but colonoscopy revealed no abnormalities and interestingly patient also got anti tubercular treatment and there was no improvement then we did go back to the slide please then we did the fecal calprotectin it was very high next slide ultimately we did the biopsy and other part and ultimately the diagnosis became the crohn's disease this is the desperate young boy of crohn's disease now he is completely all right is doing very good so that was a very rare diagnosis have a look to this picture this is actually endoscopic retroscopic uh, retrograde cholangiopathy and keratography just look have a pictorial look this is the scope you see you should know with this is the scope and this is the guide where you see the thin guide where and this is the cbd common bile duct so in the CBD, when we enter the contrast, you see the black area, black hole. And this is white, this is white, and this is the filling defect. So when there is a filling defect, it is nothing but stone. So a filling defect noted within the lumen of the common bile duct, the arrow is showing that identifies cholecholithiasis. So through the ERCP, we can remove this stone. Okay. Now you see the ERCP more finding. This is the normal pancreatic duct, very thin, normal pancreatic duct, right? When you used to give the dye, it goes to the pancreatic duct as well as the CBD. The pancreatic duct is very nicely delineated. Why it is pancreatic duct? Because you see the is going horizontally in front of the vertebral crown through the pancreatic line. But if it was the CBD, it could go upward through this way. So it's going horizontally. So you see stone in the pancreatic duct you see the filling defect filling defect and the pancreatic duct is dilated and you come to the right slide you see again large stone in the pancreatic duct one two these two very large pancreatic so these are the very dilated pancreatic duct i believe it's very easy for you to identify those stones next this is a small picture of the MRCP, Magnetic Resonance Pancreatography. You see the MRI doesn't use the contrast. This use the fluid and the MRI magnetic field. You see again, you see the patient had a recurrent abdominal pain and you see this is the very nicely delineated area. This is the, you see, there is a right and left hepatic duct and this is the CBD and this is the filling defect. So this is the MRCP findings. Next. Stone in the bile duct and the gallbladder is also distended. And just have a look to the endoscopic ultrasound. Nowadays endoscopic ultrasound has revolutionized in the diagnosis of the pancreatic bed. Even it is superior than the CT. It has got a 98% diagnostic accuracy in patients with obstructive jaundice. And it allows the endoscopic ultrasound guided efficacy as well. Sensitivity in focal pancreas is also very high, superior than CT, and reported to be more specific than MRCP in diagnosis biliary structure. You see, there is a stone, and it is giving a negative shadow behind. You see, negative shadow behind. So this is mainly for the pancreatic biliary disease. So you should know that this is endoscopic ultrasound. Next. Again, you see in the CBD through the endoscopic ultrasound, we can see the stone. And uh, very interesting is that when you do the US, you can see the IVC in the right side, inferior vena cava. This is the duodenal bulb where we used to put the probe of endoscope. This is the gallbladder. This is the fundus of the gallbladder. This is the neck of the gallbladder. This is the liver. This is the IVC. And this is the CBD. So to get the pancreatic bed from the duodenal area, you can see everything behind it. So very revolutionized in the era of 
endoscopy just putting a ultrasound probe in front next i'm quickly because i'm running short of time because i have been asked to say 40 minutes but i think uh, i have not get 40 minutes totally at the beginning uh, eaten up by the presenter 10 minutes so i need more 5 minutes sorry going quickly next slide so what are the endoscopy treatment options you if you can perform the endoscopy so very simple things endoscopy is nothing more than say uh, very easy next to stethoscope a internist should know how to do endoscopy a internist should know how to do the eco a internist should know how to do the bronchoscopy a internist should know how to do the ultrasound these are the bedside instrument this is no more a super specialty subject if you do not know this you will behave like a traffic you should know all the expertise so endoscopic stigma of the bleeding peptic ulcer you can easily give reward if you do not know the procedure just seeing and referring what is the benefit if you cannot stop the bleeding of the uh, peptic ulcer disease bleeding wh what necessity is there how you can manage the emergency next and you see injection sclerotherapy this can come in the exam how you can uh, do you can inject in the lesion through epinephrine absolute alcohol or sodium tetradecyl sulfate uh, very easily you can inject through the lesion next and there are thermal therapy when there is active bleeding you can do for laser or electric current therapy contact thermal therapy electric coagulation argon laser plasma coagulation next so very interesting if somebody is doing this and uh, there is a bleeding vessel you can just put clip easily you can clipping this lesion bleeding will stop so very cell bleeding is very interesting but i came now very cell bleeding is dangerous how you can stabilize the patient what do you do next slide you can see the sclerotherapy through the injection uh, in the barracks you can directly inject the scleric as and obliterate the barracks and stop the bleeding next and this is very interesting you see the therapy of choice for very cell bleeding is very easy this is personally we did in the acute medicine center of dhaka medical college the patient comes with upper gi bleeding we did the evl endoscopic very cell ligation you see the endoscopic very cell ligation how we did it this is the varix and we just put a band in the in this part of the varix and the varix became closed so very easy and this is the very cell ligation procedure next next oh if somebody take foreign body the endoscopy again comes you see somebody eat blade somebody take battery so whenever you want to take up the sharp object there should be over the wear or there should be a net or there should be over the wear tube and you can just touch it and take it out from the stomach next foreign body in the rectum next 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 and a stricture dilation just have a look to the pictures and if we get time and sometimes we can go for more expression of this next this is actually achalasia cardia how we can just pneumatic dilation of the achalasia cardia and this is a very rewarding practice next and these are the type of the stand just have a pictorial look of this stand these are self-expanding metallic stand that are being used in the cbd next next slide next slide next slide next because no time this is parkinson's endoscopic gastrospec this should be preferred method of enteral feeding for patients unable to swallow chronic gastric compression and for supplemental nutrition but contraindications there when total esophagus is obstructed massive ascites or intraabdominal sepsis just have a look to the picture this is the peg very easy you give this food directly in the stomach even in motor neuron disease who cannot swallow you can give the food through peg next next this is a polypectomy picture next uh possibly there's uh, the red line has been shown go back please next oh uh, as i uh, i came uh, possibly we came at the end finally you see today's scp governor professor hm nazbul hasan in the left side and the past scp governor professor kaji tarik sir we are in uh, this is uh, in simongol i think lavachara resort 
uh, it is a very nice picture do you, next 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 and anyway, thank you very much uh, uh, for watching the presentation today thank you we came to a conclusion finally sorry i took a little bit more time i apologize for this thank you so much sir for your very informative and interesting presentation now is the time for question and answer session the question are collected from the comment section of our facebook or youtube live session i would like to request dr said golam magni mola sir to start the question and answer session golam magni mola sir uh thank you thank you dr pulash uh, i'm sure that everybody has enjoyed like me the brilliant presentation of professor ahmed kubir and i'm sure this will be much helpful answering the ospi questions in the coming questions so we have some important questions uh, from the uh, from the learned viewers uh one is what is the chance of perforation at spinning and hepatic flexion and how to minimize it from dr porosh so uh, dr ahmed kubi you have got it yeah yeah i got it can can you hear me yes please uh, yeah this is, a, this is actually endoscopy is a very important skill uh, and the procedural the question he asked basically it is a procedure so i think this is a very technical part and these procedure need to be expertized when we used to do the endoscopy we can let them know how to overcome all this process and if dr porish is interested when you to do the endoscopy uh, we can show them the skill how to overcome this and you should not the one message is very important whatever you do do not go blindly never ever can go blindly you see push and pull technique if you see the field is blurred do not push if you push there is every chance of perforation always you give insufflation inflate the lumen see then proceed this is the way how can you avoid perforation okay uh along we have many many comments uh, in the comment box along with along with various appreciation to professor ahmed al kobi like brilliant presentation wonderful presentation and others so and the question from dr raihan chaudhary he has asked to repeat to you the classification of varices the mild moderate and severe you have mentioned in the in your presentation but he has requested to repeat repeat the slide i guess mild moderate severe grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 right sir uh, uh, i just let, let the question <laughs> yeah uh, let me make it very easy i'm going to the classification of varices Uh, well, if I want, I can go to the uh, slide, but maybe uh, I can just tell him the classification very easily. There are many way of classification. One is F1, F2, and F3. This is small, medium, and large. Very simple classification. Or grade one, grade two, grade three. You can say in many ways. F1, F2, F3, small, medium, large, grade one, grade two, grade three. So when the varices is just visible, this is grade one. But when it occupies less than one third of the lumen less than one third i repeat less than one third of the lumen the size of the varix it is grade two but when it crosses the one third of the lumen it is going to the grade three and sometimes it can occupy all of the lumen that can be added as grade four varix on varix cherry dot many many classifications many many ways of endoscopic advancement is there i think it's clear for you uh very much uh thank you sir another important question relating to the uh, varices what would be the prophylactic treatment of variceal bleeding after diagnosis you have got the varices but still not bleeding how can we prevent that the prophylactic treatment sir good question this is uh, esophageal varices uh, we used to reduce the portal pressure that is very important is planking pressure if you do, cannot uh, reduce this uh, there will be uh, beta blocker we used to do this uh, propranolol is being used as a prophylactic treatment once the varix is diagnosed it should start beta blocker especially the propranolol is being used and those who are having asthma or other problem beta blocker is contraindicated you cannot use beta blocker then nebitolol another drug can be used carbidolol or uh, uh, isorbate mononitrite dinitrite can be used but standard practice is 
propranolol is being used as a profile is obtaining, but the way of using propranolol is optimum dose is required at least 25% reduction of the pulse rate. Unless you reduce the 25% of the pulse, uh, you cannot achieve their target uh, uh, treatment options. And another relevant question is uh, uh, EBL and sclerotherapy, when and which to choose? In, in EBL and sclerotherapy. Uh, this is a challenging situation because whenever there is a use bleeding, you cannot see the field. This is very tough. You can just suck and do the inject and sclerotherapy can be done there. And many of the time, uh, esophageal pericial ligation become a little bit tough in that situation. But in routine cases, when there is cherry red spot, not massive bleeding is there, you are anticipating there is a chance of bleeding and the patient is having asthma where he cannot be used as a profile exchange. In that case, in the clear field, EBL is the definitely the very cell band ligation is the choice. But if the field is not clear, but sprouting of the bleeding is there, straight away on the bleeding vessel, you can keep injecting sclerotherapy. And it depends on the endoscopies in which way he is comfortable. Thank you very much, sir. We will, we we as there is time limit, so we will take the la last two questions. There are many questions more, but I'll take the last two questions for this session as there is time bar. The one is from Noshin Tabastum that how to differentiate among lesions involving the ileocecal junction endoscopically, like tuberculosis, Crohn's disease, lymphoma. How to differentiate, sir? I mentioned in my presentation is still uh, from the uh, the first of all as a beginner they should carefully look at the anatomy of the GI that's very important where you are if you cannot understand the landmark where you are because depending on the landmark the disease and pathological process differentiate as I have shown then the ileocecal bulb should be identified very well properly so the location wise when a patient is having ulcerative colitis in ulcerative colitis, almost all part of the uh, rectum is almost invariably involved in ulcerative colitis if you consider the anatomical location. And it is only limited to the colon. But in Crohn's disease, it involved from mouth to anus, any part of the GI system can be involved. If somebody has the involvement of the stomach and other part, uh, that is of the small intestine and the large intestine, and the lesion is the skip lesion, and the area of healthy mucosa and following by the other areas involved that is going rather in favor of Crohn's disease but in ulcerative colitis the lesion as the name implied lesion is confined to the colon it will not go to the ilia so it is not going to the disease of the small gut it's disease of the large gut and especially it involved in the rectum and the lesion if you see in ulcerative colitis the vascular pattern will be lost which is not typically present in Crohn's disease and the the lesion is a continuous lesion. This is not a skip lesion. And the mucosa and granularity, there will be mucus, uh, mucopus presentation is very ugly looking. And that is a clear touch on bleeding. So these are the endoscopic finding of the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And if you see the lymphoma, as I have shown in some of the slide, there will be whitish patches in, uh, in uh, lymphoma. So there is white species and the nodularity is there. So endoscopic can at least can have an idea whether he's dealing with the lymphoma, ulcerative colitis, or Crohn's disease. Then he used to take the biopsy from the lesion. When he used to take the biopsy from the lesion, if it is tuberculosis, at least there could be caseation. If you find caseation, then it is going in favor of the tuberculosis. But in Crohn's disease, also you will have the granulation, granulometrous lesion. So granulometrous lesion will not differentiate between Crohn's and tuberculosis. So to say tuberculosis, caseation is mandatory. And from the biopsy, what you need to do is see the loss of creep and abscess and many, many findings are there histologically. And one important finding is that from the biopsy, the endoscopy should take the tissue for gene expert and the MTB detection. This is the accompaniment. And there are a lot of other uh, relevant investigation that very easily uh, reach a diagnosis of the tuberculosis of Crohn's disease. So thank you very much for the brilliant explanation. I must 
say that participants must be enjoying and the comment box is overwhelmed with questions but this is the last question i'll take as i have mentioned uh, sorry for dear participants thank you for your enthusiastic participation but we can't take any more question so the last question of the session today will be and but you can uh, approach to the uh, scp chapter bangladesh or to professor amadul kubir i'm surely uh, your questions will be entertained so the last question i can take for tonight is from munadi al islam how to differentiate gastric ulcer or lesion due to peptic ulcer disease and crohn's disease endoscopic differentiation between the two sir thank you for your uh, question uh, you just look at the slide what i have shown you that the uh, sharp demarcation between these two first as i said always you look where you stand where you do stand you are you standing on the lesser curvature whether the ulcer is in the lesser curvature or in the greater curvature if it is in the lesser curvature possibly you are dealing with a benign ulcer if it is on the greater curvature possibly you are dealing with the malignant ulcer next look at the ulcer what about the base of the ulcer is it in the healing process is there is a granulation malignancy will not have a healing process malignancy will always have ulceration and nodularity so if you see the ulcerity nodularity and the surface is angry look and inverted benign ulcer will never be inverted or angry look and not been indurated so if all these criteria are present this is going rather in favor of malignancy and if this criteria are not present and if it is in the lesser curvature and you see the healing process is there and the mucosa is rather convergent to the ulcer area possibly you are going to deal with a benign ulcer and depth of the benign ulcer is shallow but the depth of the malignant ulcer is deep so endoscopically very easy you can differentiate but still you should not be confident enough you must take biopsy when the ulcer is big size and the biopsy is the ultimate answer whether you are dealing with the malignancy or benign ulcer thank you sir so many questions but that's all for the question answer session for tonight dear participants as we say this is a star starlit night today tonight so we have so many stars with us we will hear brief comments from them that is our special guests our chief guests so we are going proceeding to that section and in the first i will ask the tonight speaker who is not only an eminent professor of medicine but also a policy maker of medicine as secretary general of bangladesh society of medicine professor amindul kubir sir sir once again thanks for the brilliant presentation but now i approach you for your brief comment as the secretary of bangladesh society of medicine secretary general of bangladesh society of medicine about today's session about bsm and scp and many issues like one of our participant dr abdul razak has raised that are you arranging that as you have mentioned that internists should go proceed to procedures in this 2020 era so are there provisions of training what are the policy makers thinking about that thank you sir your brief comment about tonight's session professor amindul kubir indeed thank you indeed thank you very much my dearest angola mogni mola for your brilliant coordination and telling so many many things of which actually i am not so as you love me you say many many things extra for me so i am a very simple man doing my work but one very important thing is that dr mogni you remember that we started acute medicine training and we gave nearly 100 internists uh, in a common level as a training on different arena of internal medicine beginning from endoscopy colonoscopy eco bronchoscopy eco and ultrasound uh, possibly you can remember that hundreds of our internees got training in dhaka medical college and right. that was a big opportunity we we also br brought fa faculty from united states of america there were nearly eight expert of internal medicine who came in bangladesh and gave hands on hand training on all these and as an internist he will be complete when he can do endoscopy he can do bronchoscopy he can do colonoscopy he can do ultrasound he can do eco an internist must be competent because the 21st century challenge is is a complete physician not a segregated physician which is the campaign of our medicine 
internist we used to say that we are for comprehensive medical care and for a comprehensive medical care a internist must be confident and he must be able to do all sort of thing he doesn't require to refer the case unless it is uh, really required we we respect the sub specialty and super specialty as well but up to a certain level internist must deal with the patient so the patient's harassment will not be there we cannot deal a patient's like a ping pong ball throwing here to there we must keep a complete decision and when the super specialty uh, advice will be required only then we can refer them this referral system needed to develop in the country to save the wages of the patient to reduce the out of pocket expenditure of the our patient and to reduce the harassment of our patient a complete treatment is needed which is which is only possible by internists that far i believe now uh, indeed uh, thank you very much and i am want to give a special thank to uh, Professor H. M. Nazrul Hasan Sir, who is a legend in the internal medicine, he was the past president of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Sir, love you for your opportunity to dig up, give us for this presentation, sir. Really, it is a privilege. Uh, you allowed me to speak in front of this August gathering, and at the same time, sir, I'd like to give my thanks to those audience who has taken use time to, and they have given their full concentration to listen to this presentation uh, Nazmul sir again thanks you are our idol sir and today is, there are a lot of teachers that they are been i i see professor kaji tarik sir is also there and a lot many professor i cannot uh, mention their name and in, in the platform today i see professor khaja nadibuddin sir who is chairing the session today and our chief guest professor uh, anamul korim sir who is also a renowned endoscopist being a internist and khaja nadibuddin sir is a, our dream professor who is a really a really very brilliant professor of internal medicine so very renowned professor and we are proud of you sir khaja nadibuddin sir and upcoming legend professor gulam mogli maula is here uh, possibly i did not um, forget to mention uh, is anyone inside uh today in the panel any no one else possibly i i told if i forget uh i beg pardon and all the other teachers who are watching this my last thing is that scp is dedicated for the resident scp has started a new era in the country under leaders under the leadership professor hm nazmul hasan he has really changed the education system because in the covid situation this type of distance learning is really really very beneficial and the era uh, in the near future is coming which is the motto is uh, touching the billion touching the billion is mean that uh, through the presentation you can touch many person at the same time this is a brilliant approach and it is being done by professor h n azul hasan sir scp governor you bring a dynamic changes and upcoming president professor khanabul kalam azad sir i am seeing him he will do it more more better i believe and progressively scp is performing far better the starting was the professor kaji tarik sir he had to had a huge struggle to make the scp in this shape and he is the person who pioneered the scp chapter in bangladesh and he gave this to professor h m nazmul hasan he made it more more flourishing and next scp governor kanabul kalam azad sir will take more pathway and in the background we bangladesh society of medicine are in the same way scp and bangladesh society of medicine is synonymous because they were all the president of bangladesh society of medicine so bsm is always with scp scp and bsm has got no difference most of the people in the society of medicine are in the bsm are in the scp so we are in a family you are the same platform wishing all the best for the scp bangladesh chapter as well as my heartfelt gratitude from the bangladesh society of medicine and we'll work together uh, in the rest of our time thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much professor ahmed kobi for taking all the trouble for preparing this brilliant presentation and the brilliant comments that you have made thank you so much sir for being with us and we must welcome professor khan abul kalam azad sir uh, so welcome to our session uh, one one another star to this starlit session tonight sir is the new master of amringan college of physician and also the governor elect the next governor after the tenure of professor hm nazmul hasan sir is over sir will take up as the governor sir congratulations once again and welcome to the session
So thank you. As, thank you, sir. So as uh, Professor Amindal Kabir was saying that this is a part of light that the that Bangladesh Society of Medicine has started, and that the result is the SCP chapter of Bangladesh that has been formed by our learned teachers who have been guiding us in the internal medicine from national to international level. And of course, like I must mention that Dr. Shamu Shorka sir has thanked Professor Ahmed Al Kobi for teaching him about endoscopy and colonoscopy. So dear participants, the residents, you see that a senior teacher like Professor Shamu Shorka, who has been a professor of medicine has recently retired at this age shows the integrity and the enthusiasm to learn endoscopy and colonoscopy from Professor Ahmed Al Kobi. So that is the spirit of medicine. That is the spirit we should carry and we should take forward. At this moment, I must request one of our leader, our lighting angel, who is taking this message forward. That is the message, the light of knowledge of medicine, Professor Najmul Ahsan sir, who is the governor of American College of Physicians, Bangladesh chapter, and is the heart of this sessions, the update talks about with the residents from the SCP chapter, Bangladesh. Sir, I request you for a few comments about tonight's session. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Uh, uh, am I audible, Dr. Mogni? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, as, uh, as you have heard that this platform, this session is organized by American College of Physicians, Bangladesh chapter, and this is supported by Bangladesh Society of Medicine. We are proud in our country saying that we are internists but international in era we sometimes we represent as representative from bangladesh in american college of physicians you know scp has 17 international chapters in asia there are four chapters india bangladesh saudi arab and japan so we must feel proud that bangladesh is one of the four asian countries having a chapter, a city chapter. And this chapter, it initially started with Professor Kajikal Karikal Islam. He was governor and I am heading this uh, chapter and someone will come. You have uh, name has been already announced that, but it has not been declared. Professor Khan Abul Kalajan Azad will be governor elect. Uh, I congratulate him again. Regarding today's presentation, I am really uh, amazing. I have no words to say how wonderful was today's presentation was. I am also astonished uh, how one internist can have so many qualities. Professor Ahmed Al Kabir is a good clinician, he is a physician, he is a medical educationist. At the same time, he knows how to do endoscopy, bronchoscopy, how to know eco. And I, I am proud to say when I was working in Dhaka Medical College uh, almost five years back, uh, at that time, Ahmed Al Kabir, he was. Uh, am I audible, Dr. Mugni? Hello? Yes. Yes, sir, we are hearing you loud and clear, sir. We, uh, at that time, uh, we are trying to arrange bedside ultrasound of Yaki and at Dr. Ahmed Al Kabir, he, from our 12 units, he started bedside ultrasonography, draining liver abscess, and then we arranged also some endoscopic machines, upper GI endoscopy, colonoscopy. So this, uh, while we were uh, young physicians, we used to tell our undergraduate and postgraduate students that knowing ECG and chest X-ray, this is very important for physicians. But now we say not only ECG and chest X-ray, endoscopy, bronchoscopy, ultrasonography, echo, this should be one. If one physician knows this, he will be in a very advantageous position in diagnosing and treating physicians. 
in many uh, acute emergencies in medicine ward, uh, there are a lot of acute emergencies in Dhaka Medical College. In that is one ward, so a lot of patients can get from these uh, emergency situations. So this is very important. And Professor Ahmedul Kabi is, is really an inspiring. Uh, physician for young physicians. I uh, I want to thank, express my thanks on behalf of myself and SAP Bangladesh chapter for his wonderful presentation. Uh, regarding this topic, upper GIT endoscopy is very uh, important for diagnosing and also for giving treatment in different situations. I am proud to say that uh, Professor Enamul Karim, who is my friend, he is also one of the senior physicians of Bangladesh. He is also uh, practicing endoscopy, and that's why I am requesting him uh, to remain uh, as chief guest of this today's presentation, today's session. And Professor Khaja Najibuddin, he is also senior to me, and he is our guardian. And he has he is also very a renowned physician and clinician in our country, and he is vice president of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. So, uh, Dr. Gulam Mogni, he is, uh, I worked, we worked together in Dhaka Medical College. They are young physicians. They will take uh, the baton and uh, next uh, emerging leader in, so from our country. And Dr. At, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Prince, he is our IT consultant from SCP chapter. He is taking the trouble to arranging this uh, and devices. I am thankful to Professor Kajit Tariqul Islam, past governor, and Professor Khan Abul Kalam Ajad, who, who is also present here. Uh, you will be happy to know that uh, next presentation will be on 24th November this month, on Tuesday, and it will be on current issues in medicine 2020. With this, I uh, again want to express thanks to Professor Ahmedul Kabir for his excellent presentation and taking the trouble, and also chairperson, special guests, and other professors, and also uh, Gulam Magni and Dr. Prince, and also finally to all the listeners and who views and watch this session. Uh, you know, this session is arranged as an academic session, particularly for young physicians and residents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gulam Magni. Over. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, our distinguished special guest, Governor, SCP Bangladesh Chapter, and former President of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Sir, from all the residents and all the participants, I must thank you from the core of my heart for taking all the trouble for, for arranging for directing these wonderful episodes of Health Talks from SIP Chapter Bangladesh. I'm sure all the sessions will be very much effective and beneficial for all the residents of Bangladesh, home and abroad. Thank you, sir, for arranging all, all this for us. And thank you for your brilliant comment tonight. Now we move forward to our chief guest of this session, none other than Professor Muhammad Enamul Karim, who is the Principal and Professor of Medicine, Universal Medical College Hospital, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And also, he has been a Professor in the Department of Medicine in Dhaka Medical College for many years. I had the opportunity to work with him under his supervision. And he is also a member of the Executive Committee of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. So we are very much delighted and honored to have Professor Mamman Enamun Karim, sir, as our chief guest tonight. And I'll request, sir, for his valuable comment to the participants tonight, sir, Professor Mamman Enamun Karim. Sir, there was a problem, sir. Uh, Professor Enamun Karim, sir, is currently out right now. He won't be able to. Uh, uh, participants, there, there has been a technical problem. So, as we have already, Professor Nazim sir, Asan, sir, he, he just, yes. just entered, sir. I guess he will. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back, Professor Mohammed Dinamun Karim, sir, our chief guest. Sir, are you hearing me? Professor Mohammed Dinamun Karim, sir, are you with us? Are you hearing me? 
I can see you, but can you hear, sir? Yeah. Is he... We can see him. Yes, sir, we can, can see him. Can you please unmute, unmute your... Sir, please unmute by clicking once on the mute microphone button. Just click one time on the microphone button. In the lower section of your fan. Sir, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you, sir. So welcome you back. Sir, please, I have already already introduced you to our participants. So I'm requesting you to convey your speech for the chief guest tonight. Professor Enamungrim, sir. Sir, apni bolun please. Amra shunchi. So, I congratulate the SAP Bangladesh chapter, particularly its president, Professor Nazbul Hassan, for arranging this meeting. I also thank Professor. Professor Nazimuddin, Professor Khanna Mukhtar Azad, and Dr. Golamo, and I thank the chief speaker, Dr. Ahmed Al Kabir, for his excellent, elaborate, and informative speech on endoscopy of GIT. I thank all the speakers and all the learned audience and. Uh, and others present here. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mohammed Inaman Karim, sir, our chief guest of the session, for his valued comment. Thank you, sir. And I must uh, echo the words of Professor Tajmul Hassan, sir, that is, the next session of health update will be the current issues in medicine 2020 speaker will be none other than our most esteemed most beloved and respected professor khan abul kalam ajat sir principal and head department of medicine dhaka medical college and immediate past president of bangladesh society of medicine and governor elect scp chapter bangladesh so you must not miss it you know how the presentations of Professor Khan Abul Ghalam Ajar Sir R. So I'm sure, learned audience, you won't miss it on 24th November, 24th of this month, sharp at 9 p.m. like tonight. So with this announcement, we move towards the last comment of tonight's session. That is our most prestigious and most august chairperson of tonight, Professor Khaja Najimuddin Sir, who is the Professor of Medicine of Burdem and also Vice President of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. We are very much honored to have Sir as the chairperson of tonight's session. I humbly request Sir to put up his speech as chairperson of tonight. Professor Khaja Najimuddin Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Golam Mogni. I must thank you for your anchoring the session. You are very brilliantly conducted the session. At the same time, I just thank Dr. Prince also. First of all, I congratulate the most dynamic general secretary of Society of Medicine. Today, I see him a smart endoscopist also. And this answering session was very much enjoyable. I must congratulate. I cannot but say he is a very brilliant and excellent teacher, orator, and endoscopist. Also. I congratulate Dr. Ahmed Kobi once again. You see, whatever we see in the book, whatever we learn from reading the book, he has shown us. Uh, according to Dr. Nazmol, the present governor of ACP, its purpose has been served. 
the residents and the junior doctors have seen this thing and definitely the difference between the the appearance and difference between the berries their ebl the barrets also nobody will forget today who are, who have witnessed these things and also the difference between ulcerative colitis and the crohn disease i must say i have been i have been helped very much i learned a lot i have seen in the book i have read gone through the book i have seen the i have learned the diverticula but i have seen it today i will not forget it once again i have seen the retroscopy endoscopic pancreatography to bring out the helminth and the stone but i did not see this thing like this today what ahmed al kobir has said again my three most favorite doctors whom i love very much at spring in fact i will respect them dr kazi tarik the tours of the acp was came to bangladesh with him now it has been carried by dr nazmul hasan and next time it will be with abul kalam azad i think they are most appropriate persons in this session the question session was very enjoying i must congratulate the questioners i will ask dr uh, ahmedul kobi to introduce peg in bangladesh peg i learned it i have seen it to do in in, in my institute but i don't know other institute what they are doing or not with this i should say i am grateful to acb bangladesh chapter to make me the chairperson of this session thank you thank everybody thank you very much thank you professor khaja najimuddin sir chairperson of q9 when a teacher like khaja najimuddin sir says that i have learned a lot from this session tonight and these pictures i will never forget then it is imaginable that how beneficial this session was to all the participants including me and i must thank professor najmul hasan sir and his team especially as a professor dr rafiq as a professor dr sharmishtha and of course dr prince who has been working vigorously under the direction of professor najmul hasan sir for making all this possible and we must mention that the torch was lit by professor kaji tarik sir who was the immediate past governor of acp chapter bangladesh so we are all thankful to these legends of medicine and i i'm sure the participants has been enjoyed and has been very much beneficent from this session with this i must thank to the organizers for allowing me to be first of all to be to witness this brilliant session and to hear the lovely brilliant words from our most respected teachers who are present here i'm so grateful to be here with you all thank you all and now i'll hand over to dr prince kausa to conclude the session with the permission of the chairperson and all the distinguished teachers thank you sir thank you all Dr we Prince almost came to the end of today's episode the lesson we learned from the presentation of professor Ahmedul Kobir sir will surely help us in the future i would like to thank our speaker chairman chief guest special guest and moderator sir for managing time for this program from their very busy schedule i would like to thank all the audience for attending the program especially those who have asked very important questions in the comment section hope you got your answers if you missed any part of the program please do visit our youtube channel you will find the whole program there as well as the previous programs that's all for tonight see you again in the next episode allah hafiz and good night